Well, Coach, the calendar may say autumn, but temperatures are still pretty sweltering here in North Florida. But the good news, the radar is clear. Still, hydration will be key today at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the New York Jets. On first down, Darnold. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Jags grab it. And he brings this one back. A fumble return for a Jacksonville score. So the big fella gets on the scoreboard with a return for a touchdown. Good thing he didn't have to go too far, though. You know the trainers were very happy about that. Imagine having to go get him in the end zone, escort him to the bench, and give him the oxygen. They were loving the fact that he got in without having to run very far. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau, and it's now a 7-0 game. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. As the Jets come back on the field here, CD, want to revisit what we discussed about Sam Darnold. Kind of re-energized the team in week six when they beat the Cowboys. First win of the season, so at one and four, I don't think you're ready to proclaim them as a playoff team, are you? I am not, and the tough part for them is in a normal year in the AFC East, they're the equal of Buffalo and Miami. Well, this year, they may be better than Miami, but I don't know that they're the equal of Buffalo. And I leave New England out because you know they're going to win the division, usually going away. So it's going to be very tough for them to get in the playoff contention. But this team will play better with Darnold at quarterback, and they're hoping to get C.J. Mosley back at linebacker, too. Now this week, they host New England. Not going to be easy, and then they hit the road to go to Jacksonville with that stingy defense. Darnold running the option to the right side. And no pitch there and no chance either as he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and just like that, it's third down. From the gun. That's complete. It's Bell. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And it'll be fourth down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Jacksonville's offense coming back onto the field. Let's go back and revisit that Week 6 game against New Orleans. A cool thing that happened is that the Jags honored the top 25 players in the team's 25 years of existence at halftime. Hard to believe that they've been around 25 years. But Tony Baselli, Fred Taylor, Jimmy Smith highlighted the list. And they could have used all three of them because the offense really struggled as well as Mark Brunel, who had to be the quarterback on that team. But here's a group that I think can get back into the race in their own division with their upcoming schedule. They go to Cincinnati. They're home against the Jets. Despite the fact the Jets beat Dallas, I still think that they'll be favored in that one. And then they have a home game in London against the Texans, who currently lead the AFC South. I think they win the first two. That third one? If they win that one, they could be off to the races. And if they win all three, they'll be back above 500 at 5-4. Five and four. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. 
facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone. They need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Now Leonard Fournette. He'll have a first down and more past the 20. And finally taken down to the 25-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Big conversion. They were backed up deep to start the drive, able to pick up the first. So the goal is at least a first down here, right? Pick up a first down, give yourself some breathing room, and if you have to punt after that, maybe you've helped with field position and you've helped out your defense. And avoided a three and out on their opening drive. He finds an opening past the 40. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Watch the backfield. Watch And come on, come on. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Here's the fifth-round rookie from Temple. It's Raquel Armstead. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. On the ready. 53 is the mic. Coming. So third and long. Here's Minshew. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. And the punt team on now as this one set away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big-time play and break through the barrier. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Now Bell, and an alley to run. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Bell, of course, three-time 1,000-yard rusher. Sat out 2018, but you look back to 2017, a tick under 1,300 yards and almost 700 more receiving. Now, after the run by Bell, here's another first and 10. Now, whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. I got you. I got you. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. 
had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Here's Darnold. This is Bell on the dump off. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. The shotgun snap for Donald, and that is incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Now Edwards to kick as he sends it away. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. They'll run with Fournette. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Fournette. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Off play action, it's Minshew. He's got the hookup with Conley. 15 yards on the play, first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Fournette, a first down carry. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. From the midfield strike, they look to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Minshew throwing on third down. And he completes it to Westbrook. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets, 39. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it. And he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. In on the stop, the Pro Bowl strong safety, Jamal Adams. 
I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Fifteen yards on the play, first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people have to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Chris Conley, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. This is Fournette. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Jordan Jenkins drops him for a loss of 10. And it's going to be fourth and long. We always talk about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. The kick by Lambeau is good, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there, but here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Jets offense now works their way back onto the field. They'll look to get something started. They need to down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. Ten nothing the score after on EA Sports. The Jets with the football here to start the second quarter as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Out of the shotgun, it's Bell. He'll have a first down past the 40 as he'll get this one up to the 44-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. A couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. The former All-Pro Marcel Darius brings him down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. 
And they'll try the air now with Darnold. It's caught inside the 25. That all the way in. Touchdown, New York. Robbie Anderson, 57 yards. As they are now on the board here in the first half. Maybe that is the boost that this offense needed. They've done nothing the entire half, but out of the blue comes this big shot here. You're exactly right. Like a dunk in basketball, like a home run in baseball, maybe a solo shot. Sometimes you need that big play to get things ignited. Extra point splits the uprights, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This one fielded at the five. They had a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it? Touchdowns. The tackle by Tremaine Johnson. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. From the 39, Minshew. He'll get that to Devalve, the tight end. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. And with that incompletion, let's do something different. I'm going to go through a few teams that are on losing streaks, and you tell me if there's reason for concern there. Let's start with the Cowboys. Definitely reason for concern. Not as dominant on defense as they should be. And offensive line injuries. Three straight losses. They're three and three. How about the Chiefs? Two straight home losses. Yeah, they just can't stop anyone running the football. Okay, and then the Rams, three straight losses for them. Yeah, definitely reason for concern because they cannot get the running game figured out. Todd Gurley not touching it enough, but Kenny. And then the Browns. Everyone was so high on them before the season started. What about now? So many expectations. That's part of the problem they have right now, but they still would be contenders in their division. Quickly back to the Chiefs, though. Are you concerned about them? They're still a real contender here, aren't they? Still a contender, but I'm concerned as heck on defense for anyone who wants to be committed to running the football. On the run, it's Fournette. And yeah, that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Ten Lobo. Let's go, defense. Hey, man up, D. Man up, D. Ready to go. They go jet sweep here with Chark. And a very similar result again. The Jets defense once more stopping him behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. Seventy, Indy. Pick it up, guys. Pick it up. Kill, kill, kill. Go. From the gun, then shoot a throw. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Jordan Jenkins able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. 
It's a team game, but sometimes individuals do stand out, don't they? How about that for a twofer? Tackle for a loss on the running play on the previous down, and then comes right back and gets a sack. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted, spotted at the 14-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. They want to be methodical, or they want to take the big strike and go after it right now. They'll run on first down. Bell. And a solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Here we go, set. Four, 56. Check, 56. Let's get it together, defense. Let's get it together. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. They'll roll him out right. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Get ready. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it and run time, and he picks up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Bell. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half, to about the 39. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. On second down, it's Bell. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. And he will have a man, Demarius Thomas. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And did the Jaguars come up with it? They did. Very good starting field position for the Jaguars offense as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. Now Fournette. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Quick pass to the outside caught by Conley. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Minshew sets to throw. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. This quarterback now, 6 of 10 in this first half. He's got his guys a first down here. Now Minshew on first and 10. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. A handoff to Fournette. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Hey, defense, let's go. Pick it up, D. 
Deep rip, deep rip. Looking to throw on second down. Minshew, the open man is Westbrook. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. He's got the hookup to Lee. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Minshew, first and ten. This will be caught at about the six. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. They come out here in the eye. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Here's Minshew. Stepping up, fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. On first down, it's Bell, and he can't find room to run. Bell's going to go down, and that is going to be a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. This is taken at about the 14. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. Now Minshew. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On second and ten, it's Minshew. A throw left side complete to his receiver, Westbrook. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. So a challenge coming down from the booth and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And here we go again. Ready, ready. 
They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. And that is incomplete. Tremaine Johnson that time there to force the incompletion. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. They'll look to set up his blockers. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head on to the field. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to Let's take go. care of the Let's ball? Go. Let's go. If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. The New York set to take the field. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. Caught here by Griffin. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Darnold. Throw complete to Herndon. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Again, Darnold caught here by Bell. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to... Under pressure now, Darnold, and he goes down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. To throw is Darnold. And he's going to go down again. This will probably be the last play of the quarter. So we've come to halftime in a five-point game. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. 
But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. He's going to loft one deep left side here, and that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Open man is Westbrook complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Looking to throw it. Minshew, wide open receiver complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. So line of scrimmage still at 39 on second and 10. It'll be Minshew again. Caught here by Conley. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets 21. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This quarterback now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. They'll set up a throw. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. Quinnen Williams busting through to get him for a loss of six. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack, he's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? And a very similar result again. The Jets defense once more stopping him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Check, 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 check. So third and long, here's Minshew. They'll get that to Deval, the tight end. Now a loose football, the ball comes out, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Room here to run. Give him 30 yards there. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player. But he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. Much more room to operate under after the big play. Here's first and 10. On the counter, here's Bell. And an alley to and he gets this one to midfield before he's brought go, down. Go. That here good go. for 19 at a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Come get some. Come on here. Come get some. 
And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They run the counter. Bell. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. I know every time we watch Le'Veon Bell play, we think about him making people miss the hesitation move. But you remember, he came out of Michigan State as a bruiser and a thumper, and he still has those capabilities. At 225 pounds, an underrated part of his game. They'll run on first down. It's Bell. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. On second down, it's Bell. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. Let's go. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Back to throw, Darno. And this is incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed always different no matter what you do in practice you can't simulate it right so your decision making everything has to be a little bit quicker sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust they'll try again here from the seven on second and goal here's Darnold looking in zone but it's incomplete he was trying to find his tight end Chris Herndon but now it's third and goal all right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Now Jarno. And it's caught. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. A gain of five, but not enough, leads to a fourth and goal. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Ficken's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. So the lead shaved to two now as the kickoff is away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. 
Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Ready, ready! Throwing on first down is Minshew. That one complete. He finds Sharp. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Second down and inches. He's got the hookup with Conley. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 41-yard line. So in Jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Ready, Brick. And we got Mike, number 53. Mike, 53. Go. Let him know, let him know. Let him know. Throwing again on second down. Minshew. Going underneath here, the tight end to Valve. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. A quick throw complete to Chark. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal after a gain of 19. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. Off play action, it's Minshew. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. DJ Chark, the intended target, but it'll be second and goal. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, go, go. got a couple more downs to play with. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. A shotgun give to Fournette, and he stopped immediately there. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Partner's been my experience that after two stops like that near the goal line, defense has only become bolder. They don't back off at all. I think they continue to bring pressure and force them to make a really big play against them. And the incompletion, then the run for no gain. Let's see now. That's 
So a little extra time to ponder this third and goal as we played three quarters. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Out of the gun is Minshew. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Set to valve. There to make the grab. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And that makes this a nine-point game. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now the throw pulled in by Anderson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards for the Jets there as they've got themselves a first down. He was the leading receiver for the Jets a season ago, Robbie Anderson. 50 catches, over 750 yards, and getting more and more comfortable with Sam Darnold. Now a year plus under their belts collectively. He figured that those numbers for Anderson might be trending further north. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Darnold now to throw. This is Bell on the dump off. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll make it third down. The Jets on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This time they face a third and two. Now it's Darnold. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. They'll go for it with Bell. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So after three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Darnold completes it. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. 
56, Mike, 56. Watch the run, watch the run. 56, Mike, 56, right there, right there, 56. On first down, Darnold. Under pressure now, Darnold, and he goes down. Calais Campbell picks up his second sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Well, they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Darnold. A screen to Bell. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them. Ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. He's going to air one out for Anderson. Got a man. It's caught at the six-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Here's Darnold. They'll set up the screen to Montgomery. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown from six yards away as they have now chopped this lead down to three. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you. Looks like their memory was a little too long there. So the lead shaved to two now as the kickoff is away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They begin with a run by Fournette. Jordan Jenkins there on the tackle. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. From the 30 on second down, Minshew. That's to his running back, Leonard Fournette. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll bring up a third down. A gain of two on the play brings up third and four. The Jets will bring in a nickel set here as they try to stop this third down. Here's Minshew. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 41-yard line. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Now Minshew on first and 10. And Conley's got it over the middle. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 
25. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. They'll go play action here with Minshew. Flush to his right. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. To throw again on second down. Minshew caught here by Conley. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 12-yard line. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Minshew, first and 10. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. On second and 10, it's Minshew. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Leonard Williams, the former number six overall pick, got the sack that time. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. And Lambo will put this one through. And that will push the lead up to five. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now. First and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Now a draw play. This is Bell. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. 50 on Check, 56. To throw is Darnold. 
And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Calais Campbell able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Back to throw, Darnold. He's got Herndon. He's tied in. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On second down, here's Fournette. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively. Brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, w what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. And it's a rush to the line right now for the Jets. 44, 44, Mike, Mike, 44, 10. Back to throw. Caught here by Bell. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. taken down but not before he gets this across the 25 yard line 14 yards is the pick up there at a jet first down first down now but the clock continues to move he'll look to throw and the tip there altered the ball flight and it falls incomplete it'll be second down 
Oh, a lot of contact right there. No call, maybe got away with one. What are you doing questioning the contact on that play? Let them play. And you know, it was late game situation. And I think that probably played into it. The officials, they won't let the players determine it down the stretch. Second and 10 now from the 27. Back to throw. Herndon's got it complete. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they're marching off another 15 against your squad. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Darnold now to throw. Throw complete to Herndon. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll make it second down. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Counting down to 30 seconds remaining. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Anderson, the man he was looking for, and it's third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him, all focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Now it's Darnold. He's going to let it fly. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Give him 32 on the play. Well, we spent a lot of time exalting the offensive masterminds in this game, right? They draw up these beautiful plays. They look so perfect up on the board. But occasionally, sometimes you just say, throw it up and let him go get it. How about that play? He's back to throw. This one caught by Crowder. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now Darnold. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Four yards the pick up, first down. Well, no doubt an electrifying finish to have it down inside the 10-yard line. That final shot, though, they couldn't get it in the end zone, and that's all she wrote. And they had the final shot. The last snap taken that close to the end zone they don't get it in, so they'll regret that. But flip it over, making a stand in that portion of the field, congratulations to them. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.